terms of at this time of the year, how much are you still kind of doing installation stuff versus figuring out who's going to help you guys this year? Really, it's always a combination of both. And we are very early in the evaluation um, phase for those guys because we do go so heavy with our installation in those first five to six practices. In fact, um, just this morning, as we were looking at our install cut up and our, our schedule, um, it was a it was a little bit less. So you you got to keep things in context. You got to stay relative to say, man, there's this young kid who's really flashing right now, and uh, or maybe he's making a few of the mistakes. But as we start slowing that down, okay, now how much can they grow? Because their growth is it's never linear and it's hard to explain that to young kids uh, but uh, um, there's going to be those ebbs and flows so um, really a combination of both but I'd say that we have the lion's share of our offense in already. We just talked to Keegan Johnson and it definitely comes across as I'm speaking with a really grown adult just now and I don't know if I would have said that last year have you seen that transformation? Yeah I've always had a ton of respect and admiration um, for Keegan. I, and it goes back to um, shoot, recruiting his older brothers um, when I was at the previous school and even recruiting Keegan. You know, I think his final two schools were us in, in Iowa. And I've always been impressed with his maturity. Where I see a ton of growth is in his confidence. And that confidence comes with just being in the program and understanding what to expect on a day-to-day -day basis. But absolutely admire the young man and I heard you guys talking about his ability but uh, the type of kid that he is is uh, is fantastic and uh, really glad that he's with us there's been a lot of talk about simplifying things on, on the receiving end kind of getting uh, making sure you're getting the balls to playmakers and stuff like that how has that process been going throughout fall it is a process because there is a simplification of some things but then without going into too much detail, uh, there's some ownership that the wide receivers do need to take and the ownership that they need to take within some of their decision making. And what I love about that, and it may look complicated or sound complicated, is it really gives ownership to those guys to say with some of the things that we're doing, what am I seeing? Okay, what is my responsibility? And in my mind, it also builds – a little bit better of a relationship between the quarterback and the wide receivers. So I, I think that it's going very well. Are there still a few mistakes? Absolutely. And in part, there's some mistakes because I believe that our back end, um, our secondary, is pretty dang good. And they make it pretty difficult on us. So the pictures that these guys are seeing, um, they're ever-changing. And that's probably as we go into install, it's not, okay, what are we running? But now what do we have to run that against? And uh, um, these are great lessons to help us here moving forward. And yesterday, Coach Hyman said that Sam Hecht had kind of was leading the way at, in the center competition. What, what, what do you like about kind of the steps that he's taken? Everything. Quite honestly, I couldn't be more pleased with Sam Hecht. And, and you go back to kind of his story. Um, I recruited his older brother um, at the last place I was at, and for him to – be a walk-on and earn his way into this position. And, and interestingly enough, you know, last two kids are, are Kansas walk-ons that have started at center, and both of them have been pretty dang good. And I expect that same thing from Sam Hecht. His attention to detail, his physicalness, his coachability, he doesn't make a bunch of mistakes, he takes ownership. Those are things that I absolutely love with Sam. Now. I'd like Sam to vocalize a little bit more, but that's uh, that's a little bit of his personality as well. Uh, Connor, overall, what do, what would you say the depth chart is looking like at uh, offensive line right now? Right now, you know, there's seven guys to me that are in the mix for starting position. Okay, and if you were to go um, left to right, you'd look at uh, Kilty, Panzer, Hecht, um, Taylor Poitier, and Carver Willis. All of those guys, with the exception of Hecht, have really starting experience, which when you lose three to four starters is kind of odd. Um, 
And then the sixth and seventh, John Pastore is doing really well. And I believe Andrew Langang has had the best camp that he's had thus far. And his versatility is phenomenal. You know, it's, it's, he can bounce out, played a little bit of left tackle today, can play right guard, he's played right tackle. And then when we were in a half line drill, I said, get your ear in there and play some center. So when you look at, and I don't want to make comparisons of players, but when you look at the versatility of a Cooper Beebe, his versatility is, is even more because of him playing the, the center position. So that's where we're at. I think our big challenge and what they've been told is finding that eighth, ninth, tenth guy. I've said it before the previous two years. I felt really good about our depth on the offensive line. I feel like we've been fortunate to have that depth. And who's going to be that next guy that steps up right now? And, and there's a few names um, out there right now that, uh, you know, Alex Key's working in there. Obviously, Michael Capria um, is doing a phenomenal job. Um, Drake Beckwith moving from guard to tackle, the versatility he brings. And then a couple names. Jackson Fulmer's done a phenomenal job, redshirt freshman. I, I couldn't be more pleased with where he's at. And just because he was here this past spring, Kyle Rockers doing a great, great job and how quickly he's picking up on things. Um, I'm sure you had your own things you wanted to add to the offense. <clears throat> what did Matt Wells bring to the table, and how have you incorporated some of his philosophies? Well, he's not only brought a ton of conceptual thoughts in some of his experience that fit within what we do. Um, he's brought a ton of perspective. You know, this is a system, like I've stated before, that has evolved, that I've been a part of since 2013. And just his perspective from having been a coordinator, from having been a head coach, from his responsibilities at Oklahoma last year, just saying, why do we do this? Why do we do this? Can we become more efficient in how we communicate? So conceptually, you know, in the past game especially, there's there's going to be some changes. And uh, um, it's something that he's familiar with. It's something that uh, um, that you can tell Coach Middleton is familiar with as well. You've got a number of playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. How do you balance trying to get those guys involved and not get too heavy into one thing? And you've just got so many options. Yeah, I, I think that even as we met as a staff, that's going to be one of our challenges is – and a challenge in a good way is how do we utilize the skill set of so many people out there? And it still comes down to who we can trust, who can, who can that quarterback trust, and who we as coaches can ultimately trust to be on their spot, to be on time. But uh, we do have some mechanisms um, within our offense that not only can utilize maybe the playmakers, um, the skill position players that you guys know about, but also maybe that freshman who's got a skill set, and boy, I don't know, maybe that third to seven to 10 package may be just a little bit much for what his knowledge base is right now, but maybe how can we get him a couple touches throughout the course of a game? Get them involved, be a playmaker. And in today's world, and you guys know it, I'm not, it's not like I'm divulging any big secrets, I do believe that that's extremely important. Finally, you, you added another piece in the quarterback room during the off season. How is that battle going for the backup job with Avery? I really like it right now. In fact, you know, myself and one of the other coaches were talking. It's quite honestly, it's it's the most legitimate battle we've had for a backup quarterback in in quite some time. And you know, it was kind of, okay, we're going to assume this person is going to be the backup or maybe this guy has to be the backup. And uh, right now what I'm seeing is we're looking for a little bit better consistency out of both of them. But there is a, a really strong competition within the both of them. And one's been here, you know, it's, it's not like these guys been in the program two, three years. And, and that goes with our starting quarterback as well. Uh, so... Um, some of those consistency things, I think we're going to have a really good evaluation before our next off day, um, which is in uh, um, a couple days, I believe. Yeah, um, you finally got Dylan Edwards on the field now. Uh, I was just curious, especially with DJ coming back, what are some ways you're maybe trying to, to get him involved to make the most of his 
what I will say to that without divulging too much is we will get him involved and we are pressing um, and putting a ton on his plate right now. We are really putting a lot on his plate and you know, the, sometimes the narrative, which I know Dylan doesn't like just saying, you know, gosh, gosh, he's a, a scat back or, or, you know, he's this, or maybe he's that, or he's compared to this person um, in the NFL. Uh, in the past couple of days, I've seen that young man run it through, uh, through the A-gap. And obviously with my background, that excites me pretty dang well. So the versatility that he brings to our offense um, is, is clearly dynamic. He's shown that skill set. We have challenged him um, with, and with intent of putting a lot on his plate. And is he perfect in all of them? Nope. And is he going to be perfect next week? Nope. But as long as he's better tomorrow than he was today, um, we'll feel real good about it. Curious for you, uh, divide or splitting your time as coordinator and offensive line coach, is that getting easier as, as you're going along? I think we're becoming more comfortable, and I've mentioned this before. Um, you know, we have the ability now, per NCAA rules, to have quote unquote off the field coaches now coach on the field. And I brought back one of Kansas, we have brought back one of Kansas State's own in Drew Little. And having him back with his experience, his love for this university, for this institution and this football program um, has, been, uh, has been fantastic. So that, that has certainly helped. And then as you get in a little bit more of a routine, football players, football coaches, they, they do love their routine. Um, it, it is becoming more and more comfortable. Have you seen DJ Gidden step out of his comfort zone a little bit in, in an effort to be a leader? Yes. Yeah, DJ is doing a great job. And one thing with being leaders is you can't ask young people to be something that they're not. And just like I can't try to be Colin Klein, I can't try to be so-and-so, I've got to be Connor Riley. And otherwise kids will see that. So we have seen, and throughout the course of the summer, him continue to be that leader. But we all know DJ, you know, when he gets turned, I believe, um, it is uh, uh, not maybe nearly as emotional, but the way that he practices, the way that he conducts his business, and the way that he supports the guys out there are the leadership qualities that I'm seeing him continue to grow with.